Welcome back. It's still TV3 New Day, and we're bringing you some updates from the Ashanti region. Since the lockdown, we've had Evans Inkum updating us on what's been happening uh, on the streets of Kumasi and other parts of it as well. Good morning, and thank you for joining us. Good morning, Bella, and thanks so much for having me. I see you're all strapped, and of course, you're wearing your face mask. Let me first of all ask, have people bought into the idea of face masks in the Ashanti region? Do you see a lot of people wearing that to protect themselves? Well, I think uh, if they, we see some level of, um, uh, what do we say, improvement as mm. far as um, uh, safety measures uh, or safety, yes, I mean, safety measures are concerned. Um, on the streets, yes, you, you it, it, like, it's not that much, okay. but I, I can tell you that when it comes to the application of um, sanitizer on our hands or mm. washing of hands and all of that, because Veronica Bucket have been stationed advantage position people are taking advantage of that um with regards to the face mark i will say that there's some level of imbalance um, yeah if you are if you are if, if you are if you are looking at the way manner people are washing their hands as mm. compared to the wearing of face masks is there any attempt by some groups in the Ashanti region to start donating face masks? Because I know that that's the focus for a lot of, you know, designers in the country, especially in the greater Accra region. I know that a lot of them are looking forward to creating their own or making their own so they can uh, give to the public. Do you, have you heard of any conversation about possibly donating face masks to the population well, in Kumasi? Well, that hasn't been heard in any discourse. But mm. from what the president said last night, I am pretty yeah, sure that people positive. are going to take advantage of that because right. now, with President mentioning that um, some, I mean, companies or individuals are thinking of producing locally made face masks. Yeah, people are going to take advantage of that because now people might be thinking that well, maybe there could be some commission or incentives in there. In there, so okay. So also start um, doing something. Uh, we can also benefit from the uh, money the state had voted. Exactly. Okay. So but, but, I'm pretty sure that, I mean, as business-minded as the people uh, in Kumasi are, I'm sure they are going to take advantage of that. Absolutely. Now, give us some updates on the lockdown. The last time we spoke to you was on Friday. Between Friday and now, have there been any changes, any improvements? Let us know. Well, if you are talking about... Um, making Kumasi clean, mm -hmm. I think there has been so much improvement. And uh, this morning I was telling somebody that after this particular situation, we're going to have or adopt a certain culture that wasn't, I mean, with us. Yeah. And it's pretty good. I mean, looking at the way the Kumasi mayor especially has been taking advantage of this situation to also change the narrative mm. as far as keeping Kumasi clean and in, ensuring orderliness in the Kumasi uh, is concerned. Okay. I think there's so much to be happy about after this particular situation. Mm. And when you talk about the market, yes, I'm pretty sure that, uh, especially the Swami market and that of the Dr. Mensa market, yeah. it doesn't look like these markets are going to be opened. Um, oh. so what will happen to the people living around that particular area mm -hmm. is that they are going to access the other satellite market. In, in around those particular areas. But Swami and Dr. Mensa market, uh, is it, there, there, there isn't so much hope that these markets are going would to be open. be open in the near future. Now, apart from that, another issue that one would say is bedeviling the frontline work it has to do with stigmatization. Okay. Uh, I spoke to, I was, I was spoken to a number of um, the health workers and they tell me even in their own homes, mm -hmm. Some of them are not welcome, and it's quite um, uh, problematic. So, um, well, well, and again, I'll go back to what the president said. Maybe yeah. um, this, is, uh, this is going to be some level of motivation for them because Absolutely. initially they thought, well, are we working in vain or somebody is recognizing what we are doing? Yeah. But coming from the president, I think it just beams or uh, gives them the level of a beacon of hope. Okay. Better. What about the stay-at-home directive from the president? Um, are the security personnel finding it a bit difficult to ensure that people stay at home? Or, or, you know, I can see that the streets behind you is barely empty. And so what is it like? Are people really, uh, you know, respecting the directives or are there a few that are still flouting the rules? I think the growing numbers 
in the cases of COVID-19, it's making people come to terms with reality. Okay. That you need to abstain. Uh, you need to avoid coming on the streets mm. and in, avoid the temptation of getting in contact with somebody who is a potential carrier of the uh, virus. Mm. Now, it, that particular thing of fear has, I would say, um, kind of alleviated the pressure on the police and the military because okay. initially uh, the, 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 uh, the, the recalcitrants were giving them tough time. Mm -hmm. But this time around, the fear alone is keeping people away from the streets. And I think the military and the police are now enjoying their work now because even Friday, yeah. uh, there was much pressure on the streets that I reported from. Okay. Uh, remember Wednesday when I was on the main Kumasi Sunyane Highway looking mm. at the numbers, I mean, the fleet of cars that were made to turn back to where they were coming from because okay. they were all trying to access the central business district. Some of them had no reason to get or access the CBD. Yeah, this yeah. Plan to get there, it's, uh, the, the pressure isn't much. So okay. I am sure that this week, the, the military and the, that of the police who have been stationed at the various vantage areas will not have so much to talk about or worry. Okay. Because people are beginning to understand the reality with the growing numbers of uh, cases. All right. Now, Kumasi recorded three new cases over the weekend. You were saying that there's a growing fear or realization of, you know, what really is happening in the country and across the world. Would you say that the recording of three more cases may have added to the fear amongst the population? Of course. And, of, and we also, I mean, there's Ooh. other... One will say uh, people are also being calling in to tell us that um, they know of other people who are hiding at places uh, where, for that matter, they have not made themselves available for any health scrutiny. They are hiding. So yes, these are people who is, are showing these symptoms. Are, these, are, this, yeah, these are, these are, you know, when, when, when you find yourself in a situation like this, you hear false alarms and all of that. Mm -hmm. But in all of that, I can tell you that the Metro Health Committee members are on ground, and whenever they hear of such um, news, they mm. follow up. About 95% of those news have turned out to be false. Okay. But again, it tells you the level of awareness on the ground as far as this particular thing is concerned. So all these things put together... Um, is making people fear um, and for that matter adhere to the um, um, social what, distancing direction. What are they scared of? I, I mean, they are scared because of, I mean, the, the nature or the modus operandi of this particular virus that when you contract it and your system or your immune system is not that strong, mm. then should be uh, if you have uh, so much to give out, uh, then you, you should sit down and start writing your will. Oh, uh, that's what they believe. <laughs> so that means that education hasn't gone far in terms of the percentage that actually survive the COVID-19 pandemic, right? And I think what is also making people afraid is the fact that you could text positive now, but... Uh -huh. After a few days, you may your status may change. Yeah. You, you, you test negative, and then and after then it a few could... days, your status yes. So it is making people fear because now when you contract the, the whole thing is complex. The complexities involved is also I mean making people fear mm. um, the virus. For that matter, they are I mean keeping to strict adherence to um, I mean the safety hmm. measures. I see. Now, let's talk about the health workers. Here in Accra, there have been concerns raised about PPEs. Uh, some health workers have tested positive in some hospitals. And this, of course, is creating some panic, um, you know, amongst the frontline health workers as well. What is the situation like in the Ashanti region? For now, we do not know of any health worker who has tested positive. Mm. But if you are talking about... PPEs, yeah. Yeah, availability of PPEs. Uh, I've visited... A number of health centers, and I can tell you that um, as, I mean the government is supplying them. Um, I know of the some members of parliament who are also doing so. For instance, last week, um, yeah. uh, the member of parliament for Mensha North, Collins Uso mm. um supplied a, a number of them um, in his constituency. Uh, the member of parliament for Mensha South, uh, Napu, who is also the education minister, also supplied 
the Mencia um, Hospital. Yeah. Then, of course, uh, Collins in team, who is also the Deputy Minister for Local Government and Rural Development and Member of Parliament for um, Offenso North, only yesterday supplied quite a number of them. Apart from that, um, other corporate organizations in the Ashanti region are also helping. Okay. Um, I mentioned of the uh, Ashanti Professional Club not too long ago, the same. So I think people are really helping and they mm. are actually responding to the president call that all hands must be on deck. Absolutely. So what the PPE, they are, but I think what is even most, um, 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 uh, I mean, the, the good thing about it is that now people are also giving out um, these aprons that are reusable. Okay. Uh, because earlier, the, some of the help, the frontline workers were complaining about uh, some of the apron that after using it, you cannot use it anymore. And that, mm. and, and that, and that calls for a lot more to be delivered. But now people are going extra to give uh, aprons or PPEs that are reusable. So I okay. think that is also helping the situation better. Okay, so quickly before I let you go, let's talk about the enhanced mass testing in the hotspots in the Ashanti region. Has that begun? Do you have any updates on that for us as well? Uh, but I come again. I, I, I love that. I'm question. talking about the enhanced mass testing in the hot spots in the Ashanti region. Has that mm. started? And do you have any updates on that for us as well? Well, I I am told that um, places like Oforikrom and the likes, um, people are being tested. Okay. Um, but I must also say that the the exercise here, the team leading the exercise, has been very economical with information because of the stigma attached to it. Look. Only yesterday, we had wanted to speak to one of the um, suspected cases. In fact, this time around, the person has tested negative. But the stigma alone, the fear that when I, I speak and people hear me speak, they, they, everybody will be afraid. Let me tell you this serious story. It may okay. look funny, but serious. Yesterday, when I visited uh, a commander of Inso North area, I was told by, by one of the officials that in one of the communities, somebody who returned from Italy mm. has, is, is, has, been, has been kept in a particular house, and that house has been fortified, not by him, but by people around. So I he, he doesn't have a chance to go out, mm. all right? So the fear alone is making people stigmatized extremely. Hmm. And so people who have, um, we've been, who have contracted or, and... Uh, have come out or recovered, yeah. they need fear of coming out. And that is quite problematic as That's far as the Ashanti region is concerned. And, and this is making the, the, the frontline workers a bit cautious when yeah. they are dealing with, especially the metro health, because they also do not want, in as much as they are helping the situation, they also do not want to expose uh, certain people to threats. This, this is really sad. Now, there was also a, a message that we received from a young lady which we forwarded to you about her mother suffering from breast cancer and not being able to access uh, medical, you know, treatment. And I wanted to find out if you've been able to follow up on that and what's the situation like in the hospitals? Are people able to go to the hospital for other ailments as well? Bella, truth be told, the hospitals are open. But I can tell you that OPD attendance has dropped significant, significantly. For instance, if you go to a place like the major referral center in the northern sector, that's Gompanochi Teaching Hospital, yeah. we know that on a normal day, Gompanochi record over a thousand um, um, cases at the OPD. Wow. But this time around, when you go there, it is as good as a ghost town. Wow. And um, even though people have been told that you can still visit the hospital with other conditions when the, 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 the needs arises. Okay. But people are just not coming. The doctors are ready to serve, but the patients are not coming. Hmm. This is sad. I know you give us updates on that later on. And so, Evans, thank you so much for speaking to us on TV3 New Day. Uh, we'll get in touch with you later. Thank Have you. a good day and stay safe. And don't you. touch your face mask. I noticed that you touched I it just a little bit. So you have I to adjust it from the sides <laughs> or from the back. Remember that. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you.